we're going to discuss a case about a female 51 year old female who, are, who came to Ria with complaints of fever associated with chills and rigor for the past six days, which was associated with cough and along with dyspnea on exertion. That's okay. really the highest. So, on initial assessment, the patient was conscious, oriented, as and obeying command. Coming to primary survey, error was patent and there was no cooling or secretion of the abnormal surface, and she was able to talk normal. Breathing, but auscultation on uh, chest was clear, but uh, air and was reduced to the left side, left mm -hmm. lower side, air and was reduced. And she had a respiratory rate of 20 per minute and a saturation of 98 percent maintained in four minutes. Okay. In circulation, uh, good peripheral pulses were noted, and there was anything wrong here. Air and was uh, reduced on the left side. Okay. What is your respiratory rate? Uh, 20 uh, my is normal. Yes. Right. So, uh, it is not correlated normally when we are mm. seeing any patient who is having any uh, low air and rate in any side, the respiratory rate is the first response, it has to be increased. It will not increase only if the patient is having some general apnea syndrome or something like that. Mm. Or the patient has to be very sick. Mm. Otherwise, that may be wrong, that part of uh, documentation may be wrong. Okay. In circulation, but uh, she was having good peripheral pulses and uh, BP of 110 over 70 maintained in, uh, and also pulse rate of 86 per minute. Okay. Disability was DCS was full and the pupil were deeply violent to EPO reacting. And temperature was within normal in okay. Coming to the urgence, uh, GR base was uh, 114 milligram per deciliter and BPG showing pH of 7.4 with a PCO to 40.9 and bicarbo 26 force. And ECG was showing normal sinus rhythm with 36 liter. No, there are significant STG changes. So, in this, because it's a respiratory case, an arterial blood gas has to be taken to see if the patient also has hypoxemia. So, PO okay. per level becomes more important. Okay. Okay. So, the BG is not uh, not uh, correct here. Mm -hmm. Ideally, we have to take the ABG. ABG only. Okay. BG will give pH and other parameters in our this one. But when the patient is having respiratory distress, it is always better to take the ABG. Okay. So, uh, her, in the secondary survey, the complaints of the she, were, she came to complaints of PE were associated with chills and rigor for the six days, along with dry cough uh, and dyspnea on exertion. There was no history of any sputum production, vomiting, any dysuria, diarrhea, loose stools, increased frequency of maturation, setting, weight loss, no history of any chest pain or no history of any abdominal pain. There was no allergic history. And uh, no, no any surgical history or no comorbidities was perfect. And uh, a meal was five days back and points uh, as mentioned was. And uh, for, for further uh, evaluation, uh, she uh, we uh, reassess the patient and the pulse rate of 86 with the BP of 170 and the spread rate also came uh, actually was in the lower size and saturation maintained in normal size. So an investigation, we did a, uh, okay. a x-ray, chest x-ray was taken, sir. Okay. This chest x-ray was showing a uh, little media student of widening with uh, an enlarged area, sir, here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the initial uh, such, uh, such So, how would you comment on this chest x-ray? Can you comment on the x-ray? Yes. You are telling the abnormality here. Uh, yes. how, how do you see whether it is uh, properly exposed? Underexposed, overexposed, position is correct. All these things, this position is correct. You see the clarity, both sides of the clarity. Both are equidistant from the central point. So that tells you that patient is in proper position. So without proper position, you should not comment about the media standing. Okay. If the um, position of the patient is proper, then we can go ahead with the other things. Okay. Okay, so there is a media stain and large. Okay. And uh, so uh, we were suspicious about it along with the uh, uh, the features and complaints. Uh, uh, so that is an unusual swelling. Here it has to be like this. See, normally it has to be like this. And here also there is a problem. Here also there is a problem. So both sides we are seeing the same uh, uh, lesions or something it may be different. Normally, that is uh, uh, the bulging of the left, uh, sorry, right ventricle. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have to see whether any right ventricular enlargement in a call is Okay. And further.
uh, we did the lab investigation. Okay. The lab investigation came up to the HD of 11.7 total zones of 11 points work and uh, other than that, uh, creatinine of 150, sorry, CRP of 155 was seen. Creatinine. Creatinine is 3.66. Okay. So she was having a um, uh, raised creatinine value also, but there was no decreased urine output, no disurea. So what do you think the creatinine urea ratio is given? What is the problem here? The normal ratio should be 40 is to 1. Okay. With every creatinine, one unit increase, 40 units of urea has to be okay. increased. So here it is disproportionately increased. Slightly like dis disproportionately disproportionate. increased. So what may be the commonest reason for that? Slightly di disproportionate. If urea. urea is more than creatinine, mm -hmm. it is dehydration. Oh, mostly it is dehydration in the mm -hmm. But here you have a lesion. So that, and is she, is she diabetic? No, sir, no problem. She is not diabetic. So we have to see whether it is a reversible cause or not. Okay. And the uh, CRP was elevated to 150. Okay. In local, four in the X one. Other uh, lab values uh, in the is with the normal. Okay. And further uh, uh, evaluation, uh, we, we started here on IV antibiotics. Okay, why you started antibiotics? What is the need of antibiotics? Do you think any problem in the chest x ray? Any problem uh, uh, for the patient? Yes. Inflammatory, inflammatory markers were elevated. So, yes. local was normal. So, um, we were suspecting an. A, Atypical, atypical coverage. CRP is 155, sir. Okay. And uh, since we have all these lesions on the um, chest x ray and also patient is having respiratory symptoms, okay. empirically we started on IV antibiotics. Okay. What antibiotic you will start normally if you are suspecting uh, atypical coverage? Azithromycin will cover, sir. But uh, for a uh, viral coverage, a respiratory fluoroquinolone like neoproxen, okay. also proxen, okay. also. Okay. And uh, as she was having raised the creatinine value, mm -hmm. we had uh, her on IV fluids. Also. How do you start fluids when the so here we have written IV fluids? How do you start fluids when you have an uh, elevated creatinine, elevated urea, uh, like this this patient? How do you start? How do you give fluids? And what do you monitor? So we have to monitor the urine output, mm -hmm. and then we have to check up on the IVC whether it's distended uh, uh, okay. collapse. Okay. Then uh, we can um, also. Uh, if you have a central line, it will be very useful. This type of patients, you can monitor this. Otherwise, you have to look for the IVC. Or, uh, easiest thing will be look for the urine output. There is a good urine output, you can give boluses of uh, fluid, like binding number, you can give and see whether the patient is uh, going through pulmonary edema or not. Okay. So, a continuous fluid irrigation uh, fluid has given. Okay. So, and uh, on the uh, daily basis, uh, we are monitoring the patient okay. and we are game down on the uh, for progressive days, sir. So when you are giving intake output, you are charting intake output in your ICU. Huh? How do you chart the intake output? See, anybody, take this patient, I want to give one liter of fluid. So intake is one liter of fluid. So how do you assess the output? So, um, basically we will have to even take into consideration the insensible losses also. Mm -hmm. So when you have input, then um, we generally keep a positive balance. Mm. Uh, the I/O ratio has to be a positive balance of minimum 500 ml. Mm. So when we uh, chart, like 500 ml is insensible loss. Yeah, we give it as a 500 ml as an insensible 500 loss. 500 to 700 ml will be insensible loss. So like, uh, suppose the patient is having your output of uh, thousand one liter. Okay, what will be what will be a normal? This is the output. What will be the normal intake for the next day? Normal in your ICU. This patient has got one liter output, okay. urinary output. What should be your next day intake? At least 1500 to 2000. 1700 liters. 1.7 liters. That is a normal. But depending on the uh, other values like patient design, renal failure, liver failure, cardiac failure, this may vary. Okay. Indeed. So, uh, further, uh, we have done for the evaluation of the uh, mass over the mediastinum. We did a CT chest plane, sir. Okay. CT chest plane was showing soft tissue, den soft tissue density lesion with calcification involved in the left segmental growth from the causing collapse of the superior segment of the left lower lobe. Okay. And uh, uh, we were uh, for uh, for further clarity of the same event, we did a CT chest with con uh, contrast also. Okay. And just showing the uh, soft tissue enhancing heterogeneous enhancing soft tissue density mass with the calcification in the left hilar region. Okay. 
which was causing the complete cut off of the uh, lower drop longer and collapse of the set lo uh, lower loss. Uh, so they were suspecting um, they given a usual diagnosis including the uh, carcinoid and bronchogenic malignancy. Okay, so if you take uh, these two things, the clinical diagnosis, uh, you have a clinical diagnosis, you have a CT diagnosis of these two things. As a uh, routine uh, physician, what will be your differential diagnosis from these two? What will be your diagnosis from these two? Seeing that x ray. Bronchitis and malignancy. malignancy. Normally, they have weight loss, hemoptysis, and this will not be well circumscribed lesion like this, mm -hmm. what you are seeing. It will be no, normally infiltrating to surrounding structures. Whereas, bronchial carcinoid will be mostly uh, around the okay. liver, which will not uh, spread like that. Okay. That is only an uh, uh, assumption. We cannot 100% that that is, a, that is not a malignancy. And always look for the lymph nodes if you are back. Examining the patient, the uh, left supraclavicular lymph nodes has to be examined. Nothing was there. So, mostly clinical diagnosis has to be carcinoid. But uh, uh, is there any clinical uh, symptom for that? This carcinoid? Carcinoid does not have. Um, but it is like a diarrhea, flushing. Sorry. But a uh, little bit of breathlessness was there, and she was also com uh, complaining of the uh, fever and cough. Okay. Uh, but wrong is spasm as a uh, chest where we cannot uh, any wrong or uh, we, there was no wrong age. Okay. Mm -hmm. So palpitation, flushing, yes. diarrhea, uh, or nothing was it. So clinically, uh, it is not correlating, but we don't know. The biopsy is different. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> further uh, following the event, uh, we did a uh, CT guided bi biopsy. Uh, initially, we uh, went for a uh, bronchoscopy uh, bi uh, biopsy, sir. Okay. But uh, during the event, the, uh, we found the mass, but um, it was very uh, friable and uh, in, okay. it is vascular. Highly vascular. Highly vascular. So, in, on touching upon it, uh, high uh, level of bleeding was there. So, uh, we stopped with the uh, procedure okay. and again uh, we went on with the CT guided biopsy. Okay. So, CT guided biopsy was uh, showing uh, uh, neoplasm uh, like uh, left uh, morphology such as yeah. neural. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cells arranged in the nets uh, separated by thin capillaries oh. and uh, uh, the plasmocytoid morphology. Oh. So we are suspecting a, a neuroendocrine tumor. Okay. So and that, that is a diagnosis. This may be uh, a neuroendocrine tumor like the carcinoid. Okay, but the problem is uh, the patient does not have any clinical features of carcinoid. Okay. Can be inactive tumor. It can be inactive tumor uh, or we have to uh, look for uh, other types of uh, neuroendocrine tumors. In neuroendocrine tumor itself, sir, uh, lung, lung neuroendocrine tumor can present without the, the specific symptoms. symptoms like the uh, diarrhea, flushing and okay. those uh, And uh, for, uh, they have addressed the IHC uh, antibodies along with the histamine okay. And uh, from, uh, we also send chromogranin in A and uh, urine IHA. Okay, IHP. Okay. Now what happened to this patient afterwards? Uh, so patient, uh, patient is uh, we have discharged the patient right now. Patient is on follow. -up. We have um, advice for um, uh, surgical removal of the mass. Okay. So when the patient admitted like this to your ER, what are your uh, special precautions you take? What are the complications you anticipate in this patient? So. Uh, Patient can end up with autonomic dysfunction. Sir. What is autonomic dysfunction? So patient, patient can, can have a hypotension, mm -hmm. hypotension. So then the example. standing will be false. So we have to be very careful. Patient can uh, develop uh, EP4 on standing anytime and develop other complications. Then, and this is a compressing tumor. Already you have seen that, that, that the bronchus is totally compressed and one uh, lung area is completely collapsed. So what happens if uh, the, in, the Tumor increases in size. Then that sympathetic chain can get compressed. Patient okay. can end up with uh, corner syndrome like mm -hmm. features okay. with the uh, ptosis, anidosis. Uh, and that is okay. That all uh, chronic the features. Person. But in the ER, when there is a compressing tumor like this, what happens to the airway? Then collapse. Collapse. So suddenly, patient develops collapse of the complete lung. Mm -hmm. That is a problem here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to be very careful. Okay. So that uh, we have to anticipate at any time, but uh, unfortunately, we will not be able to do anything for this uh, because it's completely collapsed. Unless until you remove this, there will not be any improvement. 
ഓക്കെ ഇറിറ്റേഷൻ സിമ്പിൾ ഇറിറ്റേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ പ്രോഗ്രസ് ഓക്കെ 